What is up and welcome back to part two. This is like the third time I'm trying to record this because I messed up the first two times because my voice got all raspy. And of course, talking for what? Is this eight minutes? Of course my voice isn't going to get raspy once. Pay attention here, you guys. Pick up the shotgun whenever it's King of the Hill on Harvest. You're going to get this map type a lot. And the A-Hill always spawns in the middle. And look, there's so many easy escapes and, and, and abilities for movement to get back up to that height advantage you can really control the a hell with a shotgun is what i'm trying to say and hopefully that'll be apparent here with this triple kill coming up anyway uh sorry for the two-part video normally i like to do them all in one big chunk but i literally just ran out of time i looked at the, the clock on my voiceover thing and i was like well i'm out of time so uh let's continue forward we were talking about the halo 4 um like, the different levels of people in Halo 4. Sorry, I got really distracted there. I was thinking about... Hutch released a two-part video, like, the exact same day I did mine. And at first, I was like, oh, no. People are like, you go copycat. You copycat. Which I don't really care about anyway, because I didn't even know he did it. But I was thinking about it. You know, like, who doesn't? What, what YouTubers don't implement some styles from their favorite other content creators, right? Think of it in terms of music. People always ask musicians, well, what are your roots? What, and they're basically asking them, like, who do you like and, and who are you trying to implement into your style? Does that make sense? So it's kind of, that's really off topic. We were talking about the different player bases within Halo 4. You have new players. You have folks from the Halo CE days. You have people from Halo 2 days. And how that affects progression and the way the game needs to be viewed as you uh, progress forward. And I wanted to give a, a, the best example I could absolutely think of to, to understand this kind of abstract point. StarCraft Brood War and StarCraft II. For those of you who don't know what StarCraft Brood War was, uh, it was a real-time strategy game that had some... It had really good success in the U.S., but it had astronomical success in South Korea. The game was basically their national sport. Around 2002, man, everybody in South Korea was playing StarCraft Brood War. Okay, I'm talking moms and dads and business people. Everybody played Brood War. Like, everybody. And the pros in the scene, it was so big that, you know, the top pros would easily be making over six-figure salaries. And then, like, the t you can look at StarCraftEarnings.com and even still pros make a lot. And, and, and it's small compared to what it was in the Brood War days from what I hear. So you had a, a, a billion people who are really good at StarCraft Brood War. Not a billion, but you have a lot of people who are great at Brood War and a lot of the top pros. StarCraft II releases, and this is the interesting thing. A lot of the experienced Brood War players who transitioned into StarCraft II were not able to have the same success as those who just started with StarCraft II. So let me, let me explain this a little bit. Uh, a lot of the big name pros in Brood War, the top 10 guys, when StarCraft 2 came out, were like, uh, we're staying with Brood War. We're riding this train out a little bit. I don't have time to learn another game. I can't take that kind of financial risk. So they stayed with Brood War for about two years. Well, the folks who decided to start competing in StarCraft 2 got an extra two years of experience on these Brood War players. And even though the Brood War players could have been insanely better, than the StarCraft 2 pros. Like, th let's let's look at the top three Brood War guys. When they switched over to StarCraft 2, the guys who had been playing StarCraft 2 longer were winning and still are consistently winning. And it just goes to show you that even in the same game, like even StarCraft 2 Brood War, or even StarCraft Brood War to StarCraft 2, it's, it's the same virtual game, but the strategies and just the fine differences in the fundamental game are so different that the best in the world at the previous iteration could not be the best in the world at StarCraft II. Let me try and uh, tie this together with Halo. There are basic fundamentals in the Halo series that anybody who's played a Halo game will be familiar with. Strafing, shooting, reloading, melee. I would say those are like your pillars right there. And jumping's probably a big deal. But th those fundamentals are what every single player must know and must refine. And those fundamentals are slightly different from every single Halo game. I was playing Halo Anniversary last night, which is Reach for you guys who don't know, and it is such a different game. The fundamentals, the aiming, the shooting, the moving, the strafing are much different than Halo 4. And I think this is what the article really wanted to get across to the newer players within the series. You can't focus on these high-end, crazy level strategies. We're talking really advanced level player stuff. Things that like, okay, StarCraft 2 pros are way into crazy, crazy out there strategy, right? 
only like 2% of the people who play StarCraft II uh, actually need to be that good to understand the strategies, right? For the rest of us, for the 98% who play StarCraft II, your victory is based off of basic fundamentals, not high-end crazy meta strat. And the same is true with Halo 4. This game is, is, is like a Halo game. It has fundamentals in it that are exactly like Halo games. Moving, strafing, shooting. There's communicating, there's a whole bunch of other stuff too, but for the most part, it's the moving and the shooting and the, the gun fighting. Knowing when to engage, knowing when to disengage, right? It's not some crazy high-end meta. It's not like, you know, the pros, well, pros are a different story, but for 90% of us playing this game, right, we need to be really good at the basic fundamentals, moving, shooting, strafing, and the basics. And the, the article really tried to get across this point. It was really, you know, the forum post, excuse me, was just uh, deeply rooted in this belief that if you're a newer player and if you're an advanced player, you both need to be practicing the fundamentals. The, uh, let me flip my notes over, I actually have it. Um, the new player needs to focus on these things. Most games of StarCraft II are one with macro, which is fundamentals. Like most games of StarCraft II are one with macro. Only at the highest level of play do the high-tech strategies matter. And, and for almost all of us, I can say, in pub matches, there is not that level of high-tech strat as if you're playing four-on-four four competitive, four guys with mics, four guys without mics. It's a totally different ball game when you play. Like, what the, the, the level the pros play at, it's a totally different game. They're, they're playing this game in, in more of a, a deep, high-end strat. But for 90% of us, when we're not in those situations, victory is assured by basic fundamentals, by killing and slaying and understanding where to go and that, that whole idea. Oh, my goodness. I hope this, I hope this commentary aided... I don't know. I don't know if you're going to like immediately walk away from this and be like, man, I have been so educated in this weird philosophy about video games, BBK Dragoon. But maybe it'll help you understand that for the highest level of players down to the lowest level, this game is about fundamentals. High level strats and understanding this game at the pro level isn't going to matter unless you are a pro playing against pros, right? It'll aid you in pubs, I guess, a bit, but... Anyway, I know. It was long. It was a very long video. Um, I'd love some feedback. I'd love to hear what you guys think because I know it was a bit rambly. Anyway, uh, I'm off on break. I'll see you all soon. Peace.